What is up, everyone, and welcome to the special edition Monday version of Friday Night Wars. We wanted to make sure we got this projection production ready for you. Me and Joe attended in person last week. Rams camp one day, Chargers camp the next day, and now we're here to go ahead and let you guys know exactly what we saw. And we're going to skip the music and the intro stuff. Joe, how's it going? You enjoy your mock draft Monday earlier? Loved it. Enjoyed it. Eric Moody was on there. Eric Moody. <laughs> the Moody. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, mock draft Monday is always great. I think we only got a couple of them left, so I had to cherish the oh yeah the moments. You know, what everyone I mean? matters until you know next year when we do it again. But anyways, we saw <laughs> some sights. We heard some sounds. I'm gonna show you just some of the scenery, what the camps looked like in this first clip. And then we'll get into the specific players and, and what we noticed from the games. kind of what it all looked like you saw the kids zone at rams camp the rams kind of went more all out in the presentation for sure yeah the rams had a lot more to do um for the family but and it was a lot cooler i'll tell you that too it was like you had to, at least had the win joe mike yeah and if you guys saw that that was my kids on there so and joe did you see your long jump joe your broad no, jump i didn't <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, the Rams actually had a lot more and, th but they had a lot more, uh, a spread out facility too. Mm -hmm. They're, they're on the university of, of UC Irvine. Irvine? Yeah, UC UC Irvine. Irvine. So they had a lot more to go along with it. Um, and a lot more people too, but I liked it. Joe got that elite long jump. Just to let you guys know. <laughs> The Chargers were playing at a high school, so it is understanding they had less space. They did, they did have the boat mobile parked out front. You saw that Chargers gear, the banners and everything when you walked in. Their graphic design department did a lot better job. Yeah. The Chargers, like, I'm going to say this. The Chargers did a lot. Uh, it was a lot better with the space that they had. And they they did set it up for a lot of pictures. So they had, like, the, the smiley faces that the Chargers had. Uh, they didn't have the kids zone that we saw, but I think the kids zone might come out on the weekends because I was talking to a couple of the guys there and they said they get more people on the weekends. We went on a what Wednesday midweek, yeah. nine o'clock in the morning practice. So, of course, we we got to see more stuff than some people did uh, because not everybody's there. But it was between the two camps. I I can't I can't argue. I like I love both camps. I, I I'm ready to go next next year. And I want to hit more camps. How about that? Oh, we're going to Dallas Cowboys camp for sure. Of course, Mike noticed the graphic. Yeah, oh, I always noticed. Same old sport. Uh, we took Mike. Mike was there. And we also took our behind the scenes guy that you guys never see. He does a bunch of the graphics too. My, uh, we took Isaac. And Isaac and Mike, yes, they would look at graphics, especially I don't know if you saw the uh, Matthew Stafford one that was at the beginning of the video that Mike just showed. They all looked, they were both looking at it going, we could have made a better graphic than this. We could have done better than this. So, yes, they were looking at the graphic designs at both camps and just going at it. Uh, Mike Moore at both camps and the other than Isaac. But yeah, that was that was some of the talk that they were having <laughs> at the camps, and it was funny to see. But like I said, uh, both camps were if you haven't been to a training camp, like uh, I don't know why, why it took me so long to go to an actual training camp, Mike. But I love it. I loved it. Yeah, I loved it too. And it was one of the better sports experiences I've had in, in, in my time around the sports world. And the Fan Fest was a ton of fun last week with Tony. Or I think it was the week before now 
Uh, but not only did we get to see the players up person up close and personal, we ran into a few people as well. Yeah, that's the compass on the beat. Fernando Ramirez and Gilberto Manzano. They're host of the show, Compas on the Beat, also Sports Illustrated writers, Chargers writers, uh, and they're friends of the Warzone Sports Network. And then, of course, Joe had to get his picture when he saw his buddy, Rappaport, out there. Yeah, buddy, Rappaport. Friend of the Warzone Sports Network. I saw that you posted that clip earlier uh, of Ian Rappaport doing our mock drafts with us earlier this year. Um, Guys, okay, before I get into Gilbert and, and Fernando, because I, I love those guys. Those guys are funny and awesome. Ian Rappaport, the one of the busiest men and most respected men in our in their in our business, in the NFL business, right? Every time I hit this guy up, I hit him up during draft weekend when he did our it was the busiest time of his year, NFL draft weekend on his way to Cleveland. He went out of his way to get us a video for our mock draft, right? Blew us away. Loved Ian Rappaport ever since then. I saw that he was flying to California. Saw that he was coming to Charger Camp. I hit him up. Hey, Ian, I'm going to Charger Camp too. Just happened to be that we're going to the same day. When I see get there, we need to meet up. We need to take a picture. He said, absolutely do it. I saw him that morning. I said, Ian, what's up? Well, guess what? The, the, they have a little media spot. I'm not media. I'm not supposed to go to the media spot. Charger security did a really good job at blocking me from going in there. I'm a big dude. Try to get in there. Ian Rappaport went out of his way. Mike went out of it. This was before Mike showed up. Mike got stuck in traffic. I got ready for LA traffic and I showed up early. Ian Rappaport went out of his way, out of his way. He was stuck behind two, a fence. Then there was like a family area. And then there's a fence that we took the picture. And I, I go, hey, Ian, they won't let me come over there. Charger security stopping me. Um, well, maybe I'll just hit you up later or, and he goes, he waves the security over there, got him to open the gate. He came through, walked all the way to where I was. It was about 30 to 40, uh, yards in between us. And he did it. So yes, Ian Rappaport, meeting Ian Rappaport, nicest guy I've ever met, busiest guy, but he sat there, talked to me for uh, a good two to three minutes. We didn't have a long time, but he had to go do his thing. I loved it. Yeah. And it's not even like. And we're still very, very small, but we've probably grown three or five X of what we were when the rap sheet made an appearance in our Royal Rumble style mock draft. And he opened it. He was like, no, give me the first overall pick. Yeah. I'm coming out with the bang. Here comes what would the return equivalent be to like a John Cena is pick one in a Royal Rumble. Yeah. And, and my thing is, like I've been telling people, like he made time for for me, like. The busy, he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do that. And I would have respected him to be like, hey, that's too much to do. I'm trying to work over here. But he made time, no matter how big of head he was. And that's why I said, anytime I see you in the Rappaport on TV, I give him the respect, man. That, that dude went above and beyond for the small people like us. And I uh, thank you again, Ian, if you're out there. But the, the other picture that you show, Fernando Ramirez <laughs> and Gilbert Manzano. <laughs> the, this is like, this picture right here was like after 30 or 30 minutes of us just sitting there talking and having a great time. And we've, mind you, we've only met these guys on screen and we finally got to meet in person. This is our first time meeting them in person. And Mike, it felt like we've known them for 20, 30 years. Like yeah. we were just sitting there talking, having a great time. We were throwing jabs at each other. We were <laughs> cho- like my wife afterwards was like, have you ever met these guys? And I was like, no, no, I haven't. She goes, and you let them talk to you like that? I go, yeah, because it was funny. It was a great time. Um, we had we were we were going back and forth when Mike showed up. Mike showed like I said, Mike showed up a little bit late. When Mike showed up, these two were like, "Hey, when Mike comes over there, walk away from him. Walk away." <laughs> they so did. Mike walked up, and they just take off. And Mike's all, "Ugh," like just left it. <laughs> um, but hey, great dudes, man, great. And and even and this was the best compliment I ever had in my life so far, probably. Um, and I don't know if he'll get mad that i'm saying this but fernando hit me up of how to talk to ian rapaport remember that oh yeah like fernando was like hey you talked to ian rapaport how'd you do it and i i we we had a good conversation on that and it was fun we had a great time i, I loved it and those two guys i hope we have more interactions with and they come on our shows all the time and mike i don't know if you saw it but they just broke news as well that slater oh. didn't practice he had a back injury or something yeah. like that 
and Mike Williams. We got three weeks. We got three weeks till the season, right? We got time to recover from these things. Yes, the road gro- the war zone stays growing. We try. We try <laughs> to get. We try to improve every show. Uh, we try to get better, but we're we're here for you guys. We're we're fans, just like you guys. This is we're built. This network is built by fans for the fans. So, um, but yeah, let's get into more of the training camp, Mike. Let's continue on here. Speaking of Chargers wide receivers, we're going to show you some clips that I took of Keenan Allen running some routes versus some Chargers defensive backs. Two of them are Derwin James. One was against Asante Samuel Jr. Let me know what you guys think. Joe, get your commentary after and what you thought of Derwin and Asante Samuel especially. You saw Asante oh. defending the pass there at the end. That was Asante in that last one. Derwin's the one that got beat the first two. But I'm not too concerned about Derwin getting beat. He was kind of out of his element. You're facing Keenan Allen, and he's in the slot position, one-on-one with the whole field to play with. Um, usually there's linebackers, there's corners, there's other safeties in the field. One-on-one versus Keenan Allen from the slot is damn near impossible. It's extremely hard when he's outside, and all he has is inside releases. He has no other option, either inside or run a fade. I mean, that's his only two options. Um, but when he can go both ways from the slot, you're kind of screwed there. And I'm not supposed to give the Chargers credit, you know, as a Raider fan and all that, but Keenan Allen was running some nice crisp routes um, at that practice, even on the ones one-on-ones. Derwin James, I'm going to say he looked good, Mike. He looked good. But you and I both looked at each other for a while, and we were like, he could have laid that guy out right there. He could have <laughs> laid a big hit. He, But we understandable that he's not going to do it in practice. One, it's his teammate – to his injury risk that he's been having the last couple of years, he's not going to do that. But you and I both saw it, even in the team drills, not the, just the one-on-ones, you and I both saw Derwin James like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, he was ready. He could have he could have laid you out right there. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, it sucks at the Chargers. They did the team drills on the other side of the field, so we're not going to see too much of that today. I threw some in at the end of the Herbert Stafford clips. But, uh, yeah, Derwin, the, the key thing is just see him out there moving around, see him out there practicing at full speed. He looks healthy. He looks like he's having fun. He's flying around uh, and making the plays that he can't make. He was really good at the scrimmage at the Fan Fest. He had like three batted passes and a pick six and, and probably only played 15 snaps total. Same old sports <laughs> is right. Usually the wide receiver and the quarterback yeah, win the one-on-one battles. What would you say, Mike, at Rams camp? Wide receivers love the drill. DBs hate the drill. Yeah, DBs hate the drill unless you're Jalen Ramsey. And we're about to transition into that here pretty soon. But uh, just to give a little bit more credit to Derwin also, I love how much trust Staley's putting into him. He looks at him and goes, you're the most talented guy on this team. You're going to be the captain of this defense. Derwin James, as a safety, as a safety, is wearing the green dot and is going to be calling the plays on the defensive side of the ball. That is something that is rare in this league. It's usually a middle linebacker. Sometimes the nose tackle or a really good edge rusher that a safety who has to already process reading the offense, process all the different coverages they have, process all of that, and now is doing the play call as well. Very impressive, and I love the leap of faith that he's taking into Derwin, and as far as developing into a veteran player, it's going to be really good for him. Mike, you giving out kisses? They want one. No, 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 no. No more kisses. He got me one on that one. If he screen recorded it, um, just don't put it out when I'm super famous, like in two you days. Got a, you got a clip of Jalen Ramsey because – you can play that because I, I can go on and do Jalen Ramsey all day. <laughs> yeah, we'll go to Jalen Ramsey next. Here's some clips of Jalen Ramsey in coverage. Just really focus on how easy he makes it look.
Jalen really. Ramsey, Mike, when we first saw him and he walked to our sideline, both of us were like, our like jaws dropped a little bit, and we were like, "Holy crap! This is a big dude playing defensive back." And like, I know the size, and you, we could always see the size and tape measures of all these players. We can look him up, and he's like six three, two hundred thirty five pounds. I don't care what Jalen Ramsey is on paper. <laughs> but we looked, oh my gosh, he, he, like, you could, he was bigger than everybody on that damn field. And the way he was moving around, I didn't know that thing about what you were saying that he was going to wear the green dot. That makes sense now. Jalen Ramsey took control of that defense. And at this practice right here, he always made sure he called out Robert Woods. When Robert Woods was about to run the route, who called him out? Jalen Ramsey. Let's go. Me and you. And he shut him down. And the, you like like same old sports said earlier. Usually the wide receivers beat the one on one battle. <laughs> not no, not that day. Not that day. Jalen Ramsey let him know. Uh, I was this look. I've been a uh, spectacle and and like thinking about Jalen Ramsey since he was on Jacksonville and like I have a new respect for Jalen Ramsey after seeing him live in person. Um, like and I, I think people are underestimating like the size how big he is. Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald is, is huge. Like you would think that Aaron Donald was walking on the field, you'd be like, "Oh, that's Aaron Donald." No, Aaron Donald kind of blends in. He was actually one of the smallest guys on the field because he's only like what six one, six foot. Yeah, he's just jacked. Like you can't tell like that's Aaron Donald. You're just like, "Oh, that's a jacked dude," but yeah. you're not looking at a big dude. Jalen Ramsey, you're like, "Damn, like that, that guy put a shadow over you." So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm. You can see I'm falling in love with Jalen Ramsey a little bit. Yeah, and sorry, guys, there's not too much Aaron Donald stuff in here. He really did not get any reps. And I think it's because it's the end of training camp. They want to see the other guys. Aaron Donald's spot is very secure. Um, and D Donald also did the sneaky little – like, we didn't notice where he was until about halfway through the practice. He did the sneaky little – he wore the arm sleeves. He wore mm -hmm. the, the long leg sleeves. He had the jersey tucked in so he could hardly see his number. And he was kind of like in incognito mode. Like, I'm here – but don't be screaming at me. I'm trying to just get my work in. There was one play where he just walked through the offensive yeah. line. <laughs> no, they, put him, right him. they put him out there in the, with the second unit for some reason, and he he tackled the quarterback before he handed the ball off in a handoff. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I'm better than Jalen Ramsey. I was so good they called me, called me daddy. Yeah, and to speak about Jalen Ramsey, man, and I, I played corner in my football career, and I put quotes on that because I didn't go very far. But anyways – just his his stance and everything is really uh, unorthodox. You wouldn't teach somebody to stand that <laughs> high up. But when you're six foot five, like, do you really want to get in that unnatural, like, almost squat? Or do you want to just stand there and look the guy in the eyes before he's about to run his route and say, good luck, buddy? And it also helps when you're faster than everyone on the field. Because that's what it seems like also. Even yeah. in the team drills, you could tell who the fastest and the best player was. Something that Joe pointed out to me and was that I noticed for the rest of practice, he was also lining up inside a lot in the linebacker spot. So I'm not sure what they're going to do with him there, if they got some blitz packages for him this year, or if he's just going to be more versatile and covering tight ends. But that was interesting to see. I know he's typically an outside, and he'll come in the slot when he when they face good slot receivers. He was all over that field. Remember yeah. when I when I told you, I go, look at Ramsey. Look where he's at. They had, like you said, they had him lined up close to the line, um, and he blitzed at one point. And when he <laughs> – when Jalen Ramsey blitzed, he shut down a whole side on his own. Yeah. Like he took that whole in, and I was like, I don't know, I know, I'm. It's like I'm, I'm like a little kid right now talking about <laughs> my favorite candy or something. But Jalen Ramsey impressed the hell out of me at camp. Like I've never seen like I like you see so you can see much on TV, but when you actually see somebody, and especially in practice, like. Okay, he he wasn't he, like he was inside. He was like the the slot cornerback, you want to say it. And there was a time that he was actually lined up at safety, I believe. Yep, yep. Uh, and he he was just moving everywhere, both sides of the ball. He wasn't just stuck on one side. And then, like I said, he was he was blitzing. He was coming up, and he was shutting down sides of the field. And that's how great Jalen Ramsey. And this was just practice. Yeah, and there was times where he was the enforcer on the edge and run stop. That's not something cornerbacks do. I'll tell you guys that right now. Pulling guards will will love to see a cornerback when they come around the edge. But Jalen, like you said, was just shutting down the whole side, even though he was had a lineman coming at him. It is interesting to note when he was getting recruited and he was getting drafted, there's a lot of talks of him moving to safety when he first came into the league. 
and you can see it now. He's he's a freak athlete. Jalen is not going to make a b- business decision this year. I'll tell you that. <laughs> he's not going to be like Dion and be like, let this guy run. Jalen is going to lay the pop, and uh, yeah, he newfound newfound uh, love for Jalen Ramsey uh, right here. He got a, he got a fan in me. Admiration, and and until I see Jair Alexander in person, I guess Jalen Ramsey is the best corner in football in my book. Yeah, put it on the board. <laughs> yeah. From corners to wide receivers, we wanted to point this out just because we think this guy might be sneaky this year. Deshaun Jackson looked really healthy at camp. I don't know where he finishes all time, but he'll be up there. Who? What, what was the comment? It was like, where do you guys see Jalen Ramsey finishing as the top corner, as an all-time cornerback in the league? I don't think he's going to finish all time. He's got to win some Super Bowls. He's got to have all those records. Sanders, <clears throat> Sanders was just... Something else, like no, but he'll be up there in the conversation. Yeah, probably top five, top ten, somewhere in there. Anyways, on to Djax. Djax looked healthy. Both of us noticed it. Um, we're gonna play a little Djax video. Just see him running routes, see him moving at full speed, and he looks like old Djax. <laughs> You see that last play? He ran that little out route probably three or four times on different sides of the field. That was just the one I caught on tape. Um, Djax, I want to say he had at least three catches in the streams. And in one-on-ones, um, he didn't run too many routes. But when he was running against air, he looked good. I don't know if people are noticing these numbers. These are weird to me. Djax <laughs> wears number one. Robert Woods is wearing number two. And Jalen Ramsey is wearing number five. So that's, that's that was a different thing for me and Mike to take in as well. But Djax looked and – and he was dancing around. He was having a great time. Yep. Um, he looked crisp. He looked healthy. Um, I put him on our new, on our new show, the, the Fantasy Football Speakeasy. I talked about him being one of those guys that you want to watch this year as a wide receiver. His ADP is like 250 or something like that, so you don't have to draft him in fantasy leagues. But he's somebody to watch, especially with Matthew Stafford there. Uh, and that offense – the Rams offense does a lot of jet sweeps. We saw that a lot. And with G Jax's speed, he, he's gonna get he's gonna get a lot of uh, uh, looks that way, a lot of carries. I, I would assume, but Bobby Trees and Cooper Cup are the guys, right? Of, of course, they're the guys. But with D Jax's speed right across the middle, and you're putting like the third guy on him, whoo! Watch out. Yeah, Cup and Woods are definitely your route runners. Your more technical guys. D Jax is just gonna blow the top off, and there's gonna be games where he has two catches for 110 yards. Mark my words. It's going to happen at least two or three times this season. We'll see if that's consistent or not. But I just like seeing him move around because the dude's been so banged up, and he's one of my personal favorites in his prime. When he was in Philly, the punt return, all that, I was a little kid just watching DJX. Like, how does he move like that? It, it really it really was insane. And then when OBJ started balling out and started uh, his elite little three years he had, I was like, that's like Deshaun Jackson on steroids. Like Djax was the original of this. <laughs> yeah. uh, D- look for Djax. It was a good one. He was good. He was yeah, good. And also, you got to be a baller to wear a single digit number. You are not allowed to wear a single digit number and suck. It's not allowed. <laughs> it's not allowed. So, you know, Jalen Woods are going to bring it. Djax is going to bring it. I also was like watching to see who was in with the one unit. In case, and just to see if Djax was a rotational guy or not, he was in the entire no, in. period with the ones. No one else worked their way in. Tutu Atwell looked good. He didn't get in with the ones at all. Um, Van Jefferson looked okay. He was he was sporting number 83, I believe. Uh, he didn't get in with the ones. So it looks like it's Djax, Cup, and Woods as their primary receiving core this year. And Higby, and we brought up Higby, right? We don't, we don't have no footage of Higby. Big dude, big dude. Mm-hmm. No, a little, a little big, a little big. He's like six, eight or something. It was ridiculous. I don't know. I don't know what the next topic is, Mike. But thinking about Higby in my head right now. Uh, remember that one time it pissed us off. They were doing red zone drill, and they had yeah. Higby no, no. on the on the right side all by himself, and he was he had a small cornerback on him, and Matthew Stafford did not look his way one time, one time. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that is in 
this Herbert and Stafford clip. I think it is. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll go to that right here. We were comparing Herbert and Stafford because we feel like they're pretty comparable players, both just big dudes with big arms, with sneaky mobility. So here's a couple clips of those two guys with cannons slinging the rock around. It's good stuff right there. Like you said, like we said, the Rams, the Rams had it set up, and we actually had a security guard tip us off, and he was like, "Hey, you want to sit over here? Because that's where they're going to be uh, scrimmaging." So that's why we were a little bit closer for the Rams, and the Rams had six big old like uh, bleacher areas, so you could go around the whole practice field. Where the Chargers play at a high school, like we said, they theirs is not as big uh, area, so they had one grandstand with two fields, but you couldn't get back to the second field, even if you wanted to. And that's where they did the scrimmage. And it was like, ah, yeah, it was super um, far away. I pulled a few clips in there. I just wanted to get the ones where Herbert looks faster than Stafford. And that's something that me and you both noticed. Herbert got through his reads quicker. He had more zip on the ball. Everything just seemed faster with Herbert, but you did feel that veteran experience with Stafford. You could tell that he was more calm and collected in the pocket. I'll bring Mike if he wants to come on. I'm doing. I'm going on the Slump Busters after this, Mike. If you want to come on. Oh yeah, maybe we'll see. We'll see. Um, but yes, uh, Herbert versus Matthew Stafford, and this is something that we talked about um, afterwards when we had a great lunch at uh, where we go, Broken Yoke. Broken Yoke. Broken Yoke. Shout out. Shout out to the server we had that day. Badass. He gave some good recommendations. Um, yeah, uh, I I don't want to say it, Mike. Say it, say it. Tell the people. Justin Herbert is Justin Herbert's ball. His throw, his passes looked better than Matthew Stafford. Like, like when he. I mean, I don't know if you remember, Mike, when I looked at you when the quarterbacks were warming up at the Charger camp, and I told you, I go, how the hell did Anthony Lynn and the coaching staff sit here? <laughs> and say that Ant, that uh, Tyrod Taylor was better than Justin Herbert. There's no, absolutely no way that they did that. Justin Herbert uh, was throwing some amazing balls, and some his ball had a spin and a, and a, a, even the sound to it. Mike, I don't know if you could hear the sound, <laughs> you but could? I, you could hear that sound to it. Uh, he had a, I don't know. I like Matthew Stafford, and nothing against Matthew Stafford because Matthew Stafford looked good too. But I'm just saying that ball and everything, the movement, everything that coming up. Justin Herbert made it look so easy. Yeah, and Stafford has about 10,000 more throws in his right shoulder. Got to remember that. Um, but, yeah, Herbert makes it look so effortless. And it's super it's super good to see as a Chargers fan. And it looks like he's progressing, too. His arm, his form, his uh, ability to quickly get through his reads all looks very improved from last year. He's also, like, something that really impressed me on a couple throws to Tyron Johnson during the team scrimmage was he's figuring out the touch part of it. Before, he would just laser that thing in there, no matter how close or far away his receiver was. 
Now he's putting the right amount of power into the ball to get it there, get it there accurately, and give the receiver a chance to catch it. There were multiple times where Mike Williams is like, what the hell, dude? I can't catch a 100-mile-an-hour fastball with my bare hands. Do you agree <laughs> with this statement right here? He does. He got a rocket launcher. And I have a side-by-side here of Stafford and Herbert throwing the same route. I actually got footage of them throwing the same uh, comeback route. So go ahead and take a look and look for the things that we were just talking about. It's a lot more clear in person. It's going to play in full speed, and then it's going to play in slow-mo right after. You can definitely see it in the slow-mo. It almost looks like Herbert's ball glides through the air. <laughs> yeah, and Herbert was warming up right in front of us, and I was just like, yeah, uh, I'm a big Oregon fan, so I already knew Justin Herbert and what he wanted. I already, like I said, in my mock draft, I had him going to the Chargers, so I already was prepared for this. But yeah, great, great quarterback. Chargers have a good guy for the next, hopefully, 15 years. Um, but yeah, I was very impressed with Herbert. Nothing to take away from Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford has a lot more years on his arm than Herbert does. But uh, yeah. I, at this point, if you had to say, if I had to pick a quarterback in LA, I'm taking Herbert. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm taking Herbert too, obviously. And, and and Herbert is a lot younger on top of it all. My dog just dropped something. He's coming here looking all guilty. But anyways, <laughs> there we go. Mike's dog interrupting us here on, on the Rams and Chargers training camp talk is all good. But like I like I, I don't I don't it's, I don't want to bash Matthew Stafford I don't guys because Matthew Stafford still has some great throws um, his receivers didn't help him out some on some of those but either um, but either did Herberts and and Jared Cook I know a lot of people got are getting a lot of love for Jared Cook and I hope that Jared Cook can help this young quarterback out but Jared Cook was dropping some balls when we were watching too and I don't know if Mike like that. <laughs> but that was happening uh, at Charger Camp. Uh, where else were we going to go, Mike, on this? Because I have one last thing I want to speak on. Something fell, and he thinks that there's a person or something in the house, so he's freaking out. But anyways, uh, yeah, that, go ahead and go to your last thing. I would just, I was just going to say, and we can do it at the very end, which team he thought was better, which camp he thought was better. Okay. But go ahead. Yeah, because this has nothing to do with that. This has to do with one thing, and I try to record it, and when I finally got to record it, he made one. But I was recording and trying to piss Mike off. And I don't know if you guys were on there live with us. The field goal kicking for the Chargers was absolutely horrendous. Um, and they were just missing field goal after field goal. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to record this just so I can troll Mike. And they make the last one that I was going to record. So I couldn't do it. But, Mike, you and I were just sitting there watching it, and we were just like – I know you were shaking your head. I was shaking my head, and I was like, this is horrible. This is horrible. And that's always been the Chargers' issue. And you and I were like, why can't they bring more kickers into camp at least to see, get somebody in there? Uh, hopefully it works out for the Chargers. But at camp, it was bad. Yeah, man. That's not good looks for the Chargers team because the Chargers have a history – of being bad with kickers. And Chargers fans, if you're watching this, drop in the comment section below and tell me if you have the same thoughts as me. What is it going to take to just go and pay a kicker? Drop five mil on a kicker. Drop whatever it's going to cost you on a for sure locked, established kicker. I know there's been guys on the move. Robbie Gold recently moved. Uh, you know, we lost Josh Lambeau, obviously, to the Jaguars. We could have paid him and kept him around. Adam Vinatieri retired, but said, like, I don't really want to retire. I'm kind of forced to retire by Blankenship. You know what I mean? Like, this has been happening in the league over the last, like, five years. There's been at least ten opportunities for the Chargers to just go, grab a kicker they know is going to be good for five seasons, and they just don't do it. They keep taking shots. And they even took a shot on a guy like like Koo, who they gave up on too early. Young Way Koo came to us first. We took our chance on him, and he failed, and they just cut him and sent him out the door. There was another kid named Rose. There was other kids. Yeah, Bat. no, I don't, I don't even know – if Badger's making the roster because Viscano actually looks better. And we were watching Badger Badgley missing kicks on one field, like kick after kick after kick. That was what Joe was talking about. He pulled the recording. He made one. He put it away. And I don't know if Joe noticed he started missing again. So <laughs> he probably went like five of 10 
over the whole session. But we were watching Viscano right in front of us, just knocking them all through one after mm-hmm. another. So it's not looking good for Badger, for Badgley, and he missed a bunch at the scrimmage too. Badgley also, there was two field goals. They didn't send him out there for either one in the preseason game. All right, let's get to uh, what did you say, best camp? Yeah, which camp was better? Okay, overall as a team, I thought the Rams were a lot more organized. Oh, okay. And I thought the Rams were um, – because when the Rams whistle blew or the horn or whatever it was, they got to the next session and they got there quick. And they had like multiple staff members. And then we were talking about this. Like I don't know how many staff members the Rams had. They had a shitload. People moving bags left and right. Um but they all knew where they were going. There was no messing around. It was serious. It, it seemed like the Rams were more serious. I can't say they weren't messing around because every once in a while they'd be like, yeah. And then that one guy, the one rookie intercepted uh, the quarterback and took it back to the house. Yeah. And the, even though his coaches were like blowing the whistle, telling him to stop, he still went down and scored. <laughs> he was dancing uh, all the way up the sideline. Yeah, he did his dance. He did the flip <laughs> to the end zone. That was pretty cool. He got the crowd into it. Um, but the Rams seemed more organized and more serious. Where the Charger camp – more was more relaxing, I guess. Uh, even being in the stands, I felt more relaxed there. It felt like they were just going through the motions. Not, not that they weren't serious. Not like they didn't want to win. It was just like when the whistle blew, they jogged to the next thing. They got, they got there. They didn't. Um, they messed around a lot more at their practice. Like you saw it on the one on ones. They were talking more and more crap to each other. They were hitting each other afterwards. They, they felt like they had a little bit more freedom to be themselves at Charger Camp, which is weird because Staley and was just the Rams coordinator last year. So yeah. you think that he would he would do it. But um overall experience, probably the Charger Camp was probably better. Um, but like looking at the teams, I was more impressed with the how the Rams were like more serious. Like even you and I were talking about it, like how the hell did they memorize that schedule? Because it's not like Charger camp, they blew the whistle, and you would hear them go, field goal, or whatever, and they would yeah. do nothing. No, at Rams camp, they blew the whistle. They already knew field goal was coming out. Mm-hmm. They already knew it. Nobody was yelling field goal. They already knew it. It was field goal time, and they were running. So Rams were um, were like robots, I guess. And we were a lot closer to the Rams action than the Chargers. So like we would have known or heard if there was yelling or shouting or trash talking or any of that. And I think really what it is, is it's the difference between a program, something that you see like in New England versus a team, something that you would see in, you know, other places that, that like us, like new head coaches and stuff. Um, and that's what it seemed like. The Rams have a program. They have a system and they've probably been doing this for every year that Sean McVay has been the coach. Yeah. Same thing over and over again. So the only players that really got to learn and get up to speed is the new guys that, that rotate in and out throughout the years. But you also got to remember that the Rams have been together too. Uh, they've been together. Well, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup have been the core receivers for their entire careers almost. And Robert Woods was in Buffalo. But Speaking about McVay, McVay remember he was uh, playing yeah. defensive back? At yeah, Bradford? he was playing defensive back. And he had some bounce. Oh, yeah. He had oh, some yeah, bounce. He, he had was- some bounce. Yeah, he, he played defensive back. Uh, it was for a couple plays, but he was he 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 put it to those wide receivers. I'll give yeah. him credit. Yeah, I'm gonna shout out the Chargers wide receiver group. They look really good. They look really good. They're a lot of depth. When you start to talk about Josh Palmer, Tyron Johnson, and Jalen Guyton, I don't know who's gonna play out of those three. They're all very talented guys. Shout out to Keenan Allen for when we were there. Some guy had a sign that said he drove nine hours. Just to get his daughter Keenan Allen's gloves, and Keenan Allen gave them up to him. Uh, that was cool. Keenan Allen actually interacted with the fans a lot mm-hmm. at Charger camp, uh, at both camps because of COVID. They weren't doing autographs. They weren't doing anything like that. Uh, players would sh- would wave at you, do all that stuff, but you couldn't do it. Um, at Rams camp, like I said, I took my kids, and you guys saw it at the opening video. They had a uh, a kid zone where you did the forty. You could do kicking. You could do throwing. Uh, you could jump jump and catch it in there so rams camp had a little bit more uh but charger camp had i don't know maybe because the colors it looked better uh, (laughs) you know what i mean it looked better but the funny this is the one thing i pointed out to mike at charger camp they play at a high school and that high school's mascot is the broncos and it's the denver bronco broncos sitting right there (laughs) and mike charger camp was weird like the fans were quiet 
Rams fan has Rams had some annoying ass fans there, and especially one guy who didn't know anything. All he knew was Aaron Donald, and he was like, <laughs> Donald, Donald, get him. He, that's, all, that's all he knew. He didn't know even when Donald him. wasn't on the field. <laughs> yeah, he was just yelling, and he was like, get him. Like it was like the Super Bowl. He was acting like that practice was Super Bowl. Where Charger fans, I heard more Raiders chants at Charger fans at the Chargers uh, practice than I heard any Chargers. That's because we're respectful. We're calm. We wanted to let our guys go through their practice without any disturbance. All right. We gave them some peace and quiet. At the end, you saw all the Chargers fans fighting for those balls signed by our fifth string wide receivers. Okay. And that was a cool thing that they did. Of, of, now that you bring that up, the Chargers, since they're not allowed to give autographs, the Chargers, I guess, pick one position group every day and they have like these foam footballs and they go over there and there's a bucket full and they all sign it. The, our one, one wide receiver will sign it and they're all, the whole group will be there. They sign it, throw the ball. And if you get it, you get it. Uh, I almost punched some old lady and took it, but it changed my mind. Yeah. When you looked at it and you saw a signature and you're like, eh, KJ Hill, maybe not worth the jail time for punching <laughs> an old lady. But then again, Conor McGregor punched an old man in the face and he's still rich and alive and doing great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think I would have the same treatment as Conor McGregor. But yeah, but like I said, training camp, I don't know why it took me so long in my life to to think about going to training camps, but we live in California. We're blessed by that. And next year, Mike, we're going to all four. We're going to 49ers. We're going to Cowboys. We're going to Rams. We're going to – we might even go to Vegas. Why not? Let's do it. I'm definitely down. And we can try and line it up to where it's a day where they're scrimmaging another team. That's always so much fun. Yeah, you see well, all the viral videos and stuff that come out of it. Speaking of which, those Jalen Ramsey clips that I was showing that went viral on my TikTok page. So, that oh, whoa, 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 150,000 views ridiculous stuff. Yeah, that's that's it's it, it's it's all great it's stuff. Time. It's a good if you time. You've never been to training camp and you guys live near a team, I would recommend going to one. Um, and like we said, we are a, a network built by fans for the fans. So, if you guys want us to uh, need a platform to show it, hit exactly. us up. Send it to up. Us. That's what we're here for. We're here for you guys to have a great time. But yeah, uh, I don't know. I told Mike that I don't think, <laughs> and I'm biased. Yeah, hell yes, I am biased. I'll stay. Right <laughs> I said the play the the Chargers did not look like Chargers did not look like a playoff team to me on that. Ouch! Team. Ouch! You're over here complimenting our quarterback, then at the same time say that they don't look like a playoff team. Where did where did you even get that from? There wasn't like a bunch of mistakes or sloppy play. The only thing we had to complain about was my, our kicker. Got it's the colors it. they were wearing, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were the same colors as the Rams. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's a wrap, <laughs> Joe. Do we got anything going on tomorrow? I know Sports Force is going to be on tomorrow, Wednesday at the usual time. Tomorrow on the Warriors on Sports Network. NFC South Breakdown. Check oh, that yeah. Out. That's going to be We've a time. already broke down four divisions. Uh, we broke down all the AFC AFC divisions. Now we're gonna work on the NFC. So come check that out. NFC South is gonna be our first one. Um, if you guys haven't already, please go back and check out Fantasy Football Speakeasy, uh, our new um, fantasy football show here on the network. I thought it was pretty damn good. It's pretty good. We broke down <laughs> our top ten wide receivers, and somehow Mike snuck Keenan Allen into his top ten. It was it was an accident. I'm just kidding. It was completely on purpose, just to throw a little jab at you. And also, since we already did the AFC West, go and check out the AFC West preview. Stay tuned for the NFC West preview. This South one, I'm excited for it because I've been defending the Saints against this whole time, and then my record prediction isn't going to reflect that. So, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. That's a wrap, right, Joe? Nothing else? That should be it. I mean, like I said, oh, uh, Thanks to the Rams. The Rams gave out a lot of goodies at their camp, too. We got posters. We got two different kind of posters at Rams camps. We got, like, flags. What else did we get, Mike? We got all kinds of stuff at Rams camp. And we were like, but the bad thing is they give it to you right at the beginning, and you're like, what the hell am I going to do with this? I got to stay here all day holding all this crap. <laughs> yeah, they gave, like, lanyards and everything, too. I had hindsight. I was like, I honestly don't want too much Rams stuff, so just don't give it to me. Actually, my dog is currently sleeping on the Rams poster. He uses it as like a little pillow. <laughs> and then the Chargers gave us one poster as we were leaving, which was pretty yeah, cool. Hanging up up there. It's got the schedule on it. It's pretty nice. So I think I gave mine to Tony Tucker. Uh, so Tony Tucker, you're welcome. 
Anyways, I'm gonna play this scenery video to close us out. Not because I want to re-see all the sites, just because I want to see you do that broad jump again. Uh, but just always remember, guys. Just always remember, we didn't have a Friday Night Wars episode, so I'm remind you now. This was supposed to be a Friday Night Wars special edition on a Monday. But the advice is always remember that when you're talking sports, you're in a sports debate. Even if you're at training camp, you got to remember that you never know when you're gonna have to go to war or jump three feet in a broad jump.